Many state and federal lawmakers in Maryland don't want toxic water from that Ohio train derailment coming into this state. In fact, the EPA says that water is scheduled to leave Ohio on Thursday. It will take a few days for it to get to Baltimore and be processed here. On the state level, lawmakers are working to pass bipartisan legislation to stop that from happening. On the local level, one city councilman is introducing a resolution asking the EPA to reverse its decision. Fox 45's Rebecca Pryor joins us live now with a closer look. Rebecca. Yeah, while well, that toxic water will initially be treated by a private facility, eventually that water will make its way to the city's wastewater treatment plant, a plant that has long been plagued with problems. However, tonight, city officials believe that they may have an answer to this issue. Hi, good morning. From state lawmakers proposing emergency legislation. If I have to stand in front of the train to stop it, I'll do it. We need to eliminate this before it happens. To city leaders introducing a last minute resolution. There have already been too many concerns about the quality of water in Baltimore. It's going up now. There's growing pushback against plans to have wastewater from the East Palestine train derailment site treated in Baltimore. The Chesapeake Bay is at a tipping point and we cannot afford the risk of further contamination. <laughs> On Wednesday, the Department of Public Works says it was notified by a private facility that they had been selected as one of the many sites across the country to treat, then release a portion of the contaminated water. The private facility, Clean Harbors Environmental, said they'd be taking on an estimated 675,000 gallons of contaminated water in total. After treatment, they plan to flush the water directly into the city's sewer lines, where it would then make its way to the troubled Back River Treatment Plant for processing. But now Mayor Brandon Scott thinks he's found a way to block the water from entering Baltimore. After further legal review, the city sent Clean Harbors this letter Monday, denying their request to discharge the water into the city's sewer system. In a statement, Mayor Scott writing, quote, Clean Harbors has facilities across the country that may be better positioned to dispose of the treated wastewater, and we urge them to explore those alternatives. There is a long history and track record of mishaps happening at this plant. Councilman Z Cohen echoing the mayor's remarks, arguing the plant isn't stable enough to take on any additional risks. About a year ago, the state was forced to take control of the plant following several permit violations. Then last June, a 239 page report from the Maryland Environmental Service outlined operational, mechanical, staffing and oversight failures, including pictures showing sludge in areas around the plant and pages worth of broken or partially functioning equipment. Equipment. And just two weeks ago, an explosion rocking the facility and further shaking the confidence of city leaders. Now is simply not the time for toxic water to be brought. Even if it goes through clean harbors and is mitigated there, uh, we do not want it at Back River. So to clarify, this is a federally granted contract, so the city legally can't stop Clean Harbor from treating this water in Baltimore. However, once the water is treated, the city has declared that water can no longer be discharged into the city's water system. Reporting live in Baltimore City, Rebecca Pryor, Fox 45 News. Rebecca, thank you. The Baltimore City delegation also questioned the wastewater transfer. Three members sent a letter to the Maryland Department of the Environment asking for more information about the plan. Congressman Kwasi Mfume is also urging the EPA to withdraw that plan. In a letter, he says he's concerned the contaminated water would, quote, overly burden the Back River Wastewater Treatment Plant, given its well-documented failures. He goes on to say it would be dangerous for the Baltimore area. The Back River Wastewater Treatment Plant is not the only place where DPW has failed. A Fox 45 News investigation found DPW waited hours to properly inform the public about an E. coli water contamination back in September. Just last week, we learned the State Department of the Environment found DPW violated federal regulations for notifying the public. Now, DPW has also faced criticism over its rollback recycling services. The city hasn't picked up recycling on a regular basis for about a year citing staffing constraints and equipment problems. Plus, DPW Director Jason Mitchell is stepping down, but he recently delayed his resignation until June 30th after originally announcing he would step down in April. But we want to hear from you. Do you trust DPW's Back River plant to handle 
toxic water from Ohio safely? So far, 100% of voters say no. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in right now. I'm Mary Bubala. Thank you for watching. Here's another video for you to watch. Also take some time to subscribe to our YouTube channel.